Today we're going to be talking to Sasha, who is the founder of this talk, and she's going to be telling us all about her journey into founding and creating a community that destigmatizes mental health. Um, so thank you so so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Um, so how have you been doing? Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, not too bad. I think finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of this um, lockdown, which is good. Um, but yeah, just a bit about what I do. Um, I graduated in 2019, so I studied psychology at King's College in London. Um, and then after that, I got a job as a teaching assistant um, for special needs children at a school that's local to where I live. And I did that up until January this year. Um, so that was a bit manic throughout lockdown and the various COVID wars going on, navigating that. And then um, I recently stepped back from that just to try and focus on, yeah, getting the ground running with this book and making some moves with kind of stuff. So um, what inspired you to get started with this and specifically start this talk? Um, so I'd say, I've like struggled with mental health problems since I was probably 14, 15 at secondary school. Um, I went to boarding school and I remember just like every evening I had all these like feelings I couldn't pinpoint back then as to what they were. But I just remember like feeling really out of sorts. And it wasn't till uni, um, my final year, when I was getting ready for my final exams and getting ready for my dissertation and stuff that kind of everything came to head and I was really struggling like didn't want to get out of bed didn't want to see anyone didn't want to talk to anyone didn't want to do any work anything um so that was really bad and I eventually ended up going to the doctors and he put me on some anti-anxiety medication and um I went to therapy for about six months kind of got down to the root of what was causing all the problems um which was hard really hard but definitely worth it like I don't think I'd be here now if I hadn't got help um but yeah so I think as a result of that I kind of felt weirdly alone at the time despite you know being surrounded by amazing friends and my family who were really supportive um but I just felt like when I was at school I never kind of spoke to people who'd gone through the same sort of thing so I felt really alone didn't know where to seek help get support or anything um so yeah it was just talking to my brother I was talking about how I wish I'd spoken to people and I wish I'd heard different perspectives and different stories and we were just talking he was like well why don't you do that why don't you set up a company that takes speakers into places schools universities companies and just shows like real life perspectives on mental health so that's kind of where it started set up everything from there and we're like yeah I now and yeah it's definitely on the right um, so what do you think could be done to support destigmatizing mental health further I think it's such a hard one I think there are so many different things that need to be done whether that's on a personal level or societal um but I think education is like really key particularly at the moment obviously so many people have been impacted by covid and mental health rates are like higher than they've ever been and i think if we are able to educate people show people you know that there are so many different things everyone's going through and there's health and stuff then like people know which route to go down but i also think particularly education in children i think society really tries to shy away from talking to children about these kind of things like obviously some of them are really hard topics um but i think so many children and teenagers are impacted by mental health whether their parents have mental health problems and they're having to kind of deal with the impact of that or whether they themselves are struggling you know i used to work in a school before uni and we were seeing children as young as eight and nine years old self-harming so like it is a massive problem in children as well so i think if we can help educate children and young people to spot the signs of mental health and recognize when they're struggling and how to seek help and what seek help, what help is out there then i think you know we're going to help nurture a generation where mental health is no longer as stigmatized as it is for the older generations currently um so 
If a young person or a student wanted to start their own organisation, what would your advice be? Um, I think one of the main things would be plan. Definitely planning, so important. Um, you know, loads of people have so many ideas and a lot of them don't know how to achieve that. So I think planning is definitely key. Um, so like build a business plan. There's lots of places that can help you with that. So the Prince's Trust has really good templates, which breaks that down into kind of easier ways of understanding different parts of the business plan. So I definitely used that to kind of establish what I wanted to do and how. But I think also be passionate about what you're trying to create. I think it's really hard to find the time and also the energy to create something, especially if you're working full time somewhere else and you're trying to get your own business up and running. I think you need to be passionate about what you're trying to do. Otherwise, you're just never going to you're never going to find the time or the energy to get it moving. And I would say ask for advice from anyone and everyone. Um, I did it. I'm fortunate enough that my brother has his own um, company and my dad has had his own company throughout his life. So there's lots of people that I've definitely lent on for advice because it can be so overwhelming. And sometimes you just have no idea what you're doing. Um, but also there's services like the London Business Hub. So they have free um, business advisors. You can get like 12 hours of advice from them and they can kind of help you if you're in the initial phases of just an idea. They can help you work out if that's gonna be viable or help you scale up your business if you're um, already established further down the line. So yeah. Yeah, that was brilliant advice. Um, I, I've used the, uh, the Princess Trust template for the business as well. Yeah. Uh, it's a really helpful tool. So yeah. I, I'm glad you recommended that because I was thinking, yes, that's exactly what I use. <laughs> So uh, it's definitely a good idea. Um, so in terms of your career for the future, what have you got in store? What have you got in goals wise? Um, the hope and dream is obviously that this talk will become big enough that that will be my sole job and that will be, you know, financially viable, that I can do that full time and bring on other people. But that's a long way off. We're taking it kind of one, one day at a time, one step at a time. If you could tell your younger self one thing that you've learned throughout your entire journey, what would it be? Um, I think mainly have more confidence in myself. I think I still struggle and kind of always have struggled with having confidence, believing that I can do what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and I think a lot of that stems from a lack of confidence, you know, when I was struggling with anxiety. Um, so that would be one of my main ones, but yeah, I still struggle with that now, you know. Like, I cannot run a business, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I think everyone kind of goes through that, you know, everyone starts somewhere and you just have to take the opportunities and not worry about failing, you know, everyone fails at some point um, and just trust the process because it's not always easy. But if you don't have confidence in yourself, then you're not gonna kind of, you know, take the steps you need to to make something successful. I genuinely think that um, even people in very, very top positions in companies, they, they must experience imposter syndrome because I think everyone does. You, yeah. You're the only person that knows your skills. And so yeah. trying to convince other people that you also have these skills is the issue. And it just it's basically down to how you sell yourself. And a lot yeah. of people aren't that confident in selling themselves, but they know how good they are themselves. Yeah. If that makes exactly. any sort of sense. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. and I think that comes with time. You know, when I first started this talk, I was like, what am I doing? I have no idea how to, you know, get people on board with this idea. But the more time that goes on, the more people you meet, the more, you know, discussions you have to have and interviews and stuff. It, yeah, it gets easier and you start to believe in yourself, but it's definitely a long process. And I think everyone at some point will feel that. And that's kind of completely normal question um what are your goals moving forward or your vision for this talk so the last year has been a bit of a strange one i started this talk in february of last year so like just before we went into lockdown and the plan was to you know do events so our aim is to place speakers into schools and unis and companies to discuss mental health um, and put on events and workshops and obviously i couldn't do that so the last year's kind of been spent 
building our online platform and we've featured some amazing stories. We've got nearly like 100 blogs and vlogs up um, talking about different people's experiences. But so hopefully soon we will be starting to do events. So hopefully within the next few months that will be online events and then in-person events once it's safe to do so. But I think for me, if it's even one person that listens to one of our videos or reads one of our articles, or listens to one of our talks and changes how they feel about their mental health and they feel empowered to open up and speak out then I've kind of achieved what I set out to do with this talk on like yeah that's kind of the whole aim is just to help people feel empowered to speak out about how they're feeling and you know create this collective conversation about mental health that will hopefully benefit everyone and show people that they're not alone and it's completely normal to be feeling the way you're feeling that was genuinely again it was a really good answer um it's been a really really like it's been a pleasure speaking to you um thank you so much obviously i'm very passionate about this topic as well so that really helps but yeah. you are just a very uh just a lovely person to speak to thank you um, that means a lot so thank you so so much uh for talking to us about your journey and the work that you do um where can we find you if we want to find out more about you so our Instagram is at this talk co and that's where we feature all of our blogs and vlogs um, from our amazing collaborators and also we have lots of informational posts about various mental health disorders and services and um, helplines and things so that's where the majority of our content goes up and also our website is www.thistalk.com and that also has all of our stories on from different people and some more information about our services and how we could help in schools and universities and companies to kind of spread the word about mental health and bring that real life perspective to things. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting the young founders that have been interviewed throughout the series for the One Third Project YouTube channel. To find out more information about the One Third Project and what we do on any projects you may want to get involved in, you can head over to www.onethirdproject.co.uk.